The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. As always, we'd like to come to you at this time. Boy, was that wimpy. I don't know what's going on there. You might not even heard it. Eh, I did a uh, update. So you always wonder on the updates. Meter Seder da, 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 system. Okay, got that. Notes. Huh. Volume. Let's turn that up and see. Eh, who knows? Okay, let's save those settings. Uh, what else do we have going on? Well, uh, certainly uh, we were up a little uh, higher. Uh, if you took my news daily newsletter Friday or listened to the show on Friday, I was talking to you about an exhaustion move in the market. I thought maybe we could hit 3,000 this morning and then it would roll over. We didn't even get that high. Uh, didn't expect that it was going to be anything other than uh, a lot of people shorting at 3,000. We didn't quite get there. And it kind of looked like Friday. In the last 30 minutes, we were running out of gas. Um, there was uh, additional uh, evidence that um, there was probably at least a lot of bearishness and at the same time probably some sideways action coming uh, in the put market, um, mostly in the out of uh, the uh, money put market compared to the in the punny, uh, in the money put uh, market. So uh, am I expecting a giant pullback? No. I do think we could have some downside for about three days. And it may be like this. It may just be a handful of points. And the NASDAQ, of course, we're down 36. A lot of that's uh, Microsoft. We'll get to that in a bit. Um, other than that, uh, just a lot of uh, chop and movement. And of course, um, NASDAQ, what is it? Uh, I think uh, Microsoft's now 12% of the entire NASDAQ 100. So it doesn't take much to, to move that or the NASDAQ itself. Even in the NASDAQ, it's heavily weighted. Russell's, uh, I show up 12. Is that right? So that's strong today. Maybe on uh, some issues with trade. Uh, but uh, eh, we'll do what we need to do. Um, of course, uh, volume kind of was tepid on Friday. Uh, we actually have very good volume so far today, about 4.4 billion shares. So that's telling you a little thing. Um, gold was off maybe about f seven or eight bucks. It's off about three bucks now. So not a lot going on in that either. Wanted to look at crude, if I can get back to those levels. Come on, there we go. Uh, to uh, boil up, uh, yeah, buck forty. We talked about this for the last few weeks, and I said that you know oil's kind of a choppy market to trade, but as long as the Baker Hughes numbers on Friday continue to uh, pull back and go lower, that's probably bullish for crude. We had a couple of callers asking about uh, going uh, along um, the. Uh, drillers and the, the periphery of energy. And I said, you know what? As long as these numbers are coming down, you're probably not going to get a lot of people out there wanting to uh, put new wells in or spend a lot of money on wells that are marginal. Uh, and I thought crude was probably the must, much better buy. But, um, you know, when you really look at it, the big thing out there certainly is, at least to me, is those rig numbers are coming down for the first time in about four five weeks in a row, they've either been stagnant or lower, and that's like the first time in a year. So that's telling you a great deal when it becomes an economical uh, to run those and they pull them off. Uh, the best cure for a low price is a low price, and we're seeing that. 
so we got some decent mark uh, volume. We're kind of coming off uh, options uh, expiration going delta neutral on Wednesday. That's when uh, the option market makers and the, a lot of people that make uh, options markets and other markets to go delta neutral. Uh, that means that they always want to make sure that they've uh, limited their exposure all the way through uh, expiration to uh, the most uh, well, the smallest amount that they can. Uh, and that generally means putting on positions on one side or the other. So we've got that on Wednesday. Uh, the Fed, of course, um, Powell spoke on Friday. Uh, we can look forward to nothing from them that comes at least from their lips. They may send out surrogates to say things and ex-Fed members, uh, but uh, their regulations say that they can't squeak or pop or uh, crackle until the 20th. So 18th and 19th, they meet uh, and we'll see what they have to say, but uh, eh, I'm just figuring that it's uh, kind of more of the same. I don't think that there's going to be a big thing. It does mean, though, that next week we can look forward to a very light uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. And yeah, probably even, yeah, I'm going to say when, maybe even stay, yeah, probably starting late on Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. Normally you get a little action that Wednesday. And what that's going to do is let a lot of the premiums out of options come Thursday afternoon uh, after the announcement. So um, it does kind of back up a lot of these plays, probably if you're looking at going into options uh, next week, pretty much backs them up to Friday, which is going to be interesting because you get a big move come on Friday on the heels of that. Uh, there should, you know, there could be some big, big spectacular moves in the option market. We'll see how that develops, no predictions yet, other than the fact that conditions are right uh, for hurricane season in the option market on expiration day. Now, that may happen right after the two o'clock announcement, but again, um, start looking for a market that contracts, uh, I suspect, probably starting on Friday a little bit as people kind of get out waiting for the Fed to do something. And then uh, time to hop back in the pool, adult swim on that Friday. So uh, got a lot of stuff going on out here. Uh, got a lot of questions. We'll get to it uh, as quick as we can. You can give me a call at 877-927-6648. You can email me at path at tfnn.com. And, of course, you can always, always put a message in the den. Um, do we have enough time for history? Well, maybe we'll get started. Well, I don't know if you've heard the history repeating stuff either. Man, it was quiet. So I'll have to figure out what's going on. Uh, but uh, after Windows updates, a lot of those things just don't kind of go. In fact, I'll screw with it over the uh, break, see if we can't get those back up. Yeah, I figured you didn't hear it. When it's that week, I'm pretty sure uh, that the uh, system that this thing drives is been changed. So we'll get that uh, handled. Hopefully I can hear you. Am I hearing the music? There we are. So we'll be back in a minute. We'll get this all started. Do our history, lesson of the day, and then we'll move on. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And we're back and we're going to do a little bit of history. On this day in 1942, a Japanese float plane drops incendiary bombs on Oregon State Forest, the first and only air attack on the U.S. mainland of the war, launching from a Japanese sub, a Nuboto Fujitsu, Fujita. Piloted his light aircraft over the state of uh, Oregon and firebombed Mount Emily lighting the state forest and ensuring his place in history as the only man to ever bomb the continental United States. The president immediately called for a news blackout for the sake and sake of morale. No long-term damage was done and a fire was put out. And of course, it had been raining for about four weeks previous, so not much going on. Fujitsu eventually, Fujita? Eventually went home to train Navy pilots for the rest of the war and lived until he was 90 years old. No deaths, no big deal. And, of course, uh, after this, it was just took too long, too many people. They just started putting balloons up with fireworks in them, trying to set fire to the west of the United States. But I think they had about one in 50 of them that actually did anything. And, again... It's always raining <laughs> in Oregon and in Washington. Fires don't seem to go very far there. And, of course, that was about as far as they could get in by uh, letting them go uh, out in the ocean, let the uh, wind currents take them in. But that was about it on this day in 1942. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and start looking at some charts. Uh, Microsoft... Um, in kind of a early part of the day, uh, reversed lower MSFT. We'll take a quick look at. And uh, as we see that, pretty nice candle out here. Not a lot of volume, but certainly um, filled this gap. And uh, this is what I was talking about uh, the other day when we were talking about why we sold uh, Micron after buying it at 41 and selling it at the 49s. Um, there's a lot of these little three gap setups out here, and maybe they pull back, maybe they don't. But um, I'm a big fan if you're not looking to hold something for six months or a year, and you got a three gaps in it that are fairly significant. I generally always sell. It's about 80% chance you're going to get a pullback of some level, and sometimes uh, fill all three gaps. 
uh, depending on the setup. This isn't uh, the worst looking setup in the world, uh, but uh, you know, am I surprised that you got kind of a little bit of pullback out here? And the answer is no. Uh, but three bucks on Microsoft is a pox on the rest of the markets. And I think uh, pretty much why we have the NASDAQ down 45 and the S&P off five as we speak. Uh, to, to do what else do we have here? I got to keep an eye on several trades I've got, so we'll keep an eye on that. Okay, um, other questions out here. Um, a lot of them about uh, TBT. Uh, and uh, let's just look at the TLT. Uh, as I said before, what you want to look for on these double repo patterns uh, is that they continue to stay uh, below. Uh, the three by three or nine day moving average. I'll show both out here. Uh, but basically, um, you have to really to set the trade up, take the first close below that nine day moving average. And, you know, as long as it stays below there, uh, you want to be taking a fairly close look at pulling the trigger right then and there if you're bearish on whatever you're looking at. Uh, if you wait until the gap down, your risk reward goes up dramatically. Um, and you want to be in it right then. I heard somebody talking about pulling the trigger now on this, and you've probably given up maybe half of what's available in this with a, a move to 138 or one th yeah, 138, maybe 137 from 148. You're already five bucks off that high. <clears throat> the only thing I can think of is that you're know, kind of taste trade at this point chasing the trade, which I uh, I have an anathema to. Anyway, give me a call at 877-927-6648. Uh, what else do we have out here? Let's check on Docu, because I just like to torture myself and see what they're saying. Another day, you're back up to the 59.62 high. And that's the March 15th high on it. Uh, this company is kind of, uh, I'm going to say it's very close to like Adobe Acrobat as far as a product. Uh, the only difference is these guys let you electronically click and sign documents uh, without literally signing the documents. Uh, March 15th high at 4962, uh, seven and a half million shares. Gunning into that today was 6.7 million shares. Uh, you've got a real big gap out here. I would love for this to get back down into about 51 bucks or so. Uh, I may never get that opportunity, but uh, we will have to move on with that. Uh, questions about the SMH already in the email. Uh, and, you know, I think, let's see what I got here. Um, Let's turn that off. You know, you just, I'm going to say, let's do the uh, retracement up here. You got right over the, eh, let's do this a little way, different day. You've gotten past the six one, uh, yeah, 618, probably up around the 78% retracement up here in the SMHs. Uh, but again, you got three gaps in a lot of these. Uh, this one's actually got a bigger gap down here around 105, 107. But uh, you got three nice gaps out here. And normally, if I was in a stock and bought it on the third gap, I would sell it. And mostly, even if you don't get the retrace, you're, you are going to get a uh, exhaustion move in the market. And that generally means the best that you're going to get is sideways for a handful of days. Again, I'm fairly bullish through the end of the year, but uh, after this big run, it's going to need some consolidation, even if I'm bullish. And guess what? Uh, I am still bullish, uh, but uh, in short-term trades, uh, for the major equities, eh, not so much. Um, so what else do we have that everybody wants to look at today? Well, let's go to the other biggies of the industry and see what we have. Uh, just a little bit of a peep of Amazon, not much going on. 
uh, today in that. Let's take a look at Netflix, NFLX. And again, not much of a pop out here on this one. In fact, 282.89, the September 5th low. Uh, you're really not much of anything other than a dead cat bounce. Um, you kind of got to where you would want to buy it, uh, but I'm going to still say that maybe what you want to do, let me get back in here a little bit farther, um, is uh, maybe C280 on this. Um, wouldn't be beyond the scope of reason. Still a lot of reasons probably to sell Netflix Disney being the big one. We'll be back in a minute. of least resistance is david white's daily trading newsletter and if you're looking for active trading ideas then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service david uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his path of least resistance newsletter using a combination of equity trades along with options david keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And I got an uh, email asking me what I think about uh, the Saudis trying to go public. And, uh, well, I've got this I put together during the break. Saudi Arabia plans to list as 2% of Aramco over the next two years. Uh, this is uh, to set the price and uh, for them to distribute shares for them for many years later. Syndicate operators know what they're doing. Uh, basically, if you can't get the price that you want, what you got to do is make everybody want it. Um, we all know how Tom Sawyer got everybody to paint Aunt Polly's house. And that was he made it act 
and acted like it was the thing to do. And of course, uh, scarcity is probably the easiest thing to make people want things. Um, these are called sliver deals, and some of the more famous ones uh, that have turned out poorly are uh, Groupon over the years and Caesar's Palace. Uh, these are all with, uh, you know, anytime you put less than 10% of the shares out on an IPO, I'm looking at that as a sliver deal. Num the name actually comes from Manhattan condos that were being built um, as the IPO market really started to heat up in the late 90s and uh, 2000s. And the whole point of it was there wasn't a lot of land, and the land that was available to build condos on was always uh, shaped rather oblongly. So they made these condos that had kind of a – they looked a lot like slivers of glass uh, that kind of just went up. They weren't very wide. They were kind of long, uh, and they were called slivers, and the name kind of stuck in the IPO market. But if you want a, a big tell – in the market that what they're doing is trying to boost the price up. Just look for them uh, to announce a bunch of shares, only put about 10% of them out, and always have them on the shelf ready to uh, dole out to the uh, folks out there. And I bet that's probably what the Saudi Arabians are planning on doing. They figured out that they couldn't shove the whole thing out. And of course, uh, what's the e easiest way to eat an elephant? one bite at a time, uh, but uh, the sliver deals will be around us for forever. Now that they uh, know that they can get by with the SEC of actually kicking those out. Um, we looked at uh, Netflix. Hopefully everything's going here okay. Uh, what happened there? Did I lose something? Okay, there it is. Uh, to do is check other emails and see if I got anything come in. Okay, great job. Da -da -da -da. Okay, uh, so we we're looking at Netflix. Um, Want to look at some other ones, uh, especially in the semiconductor space. Uh, AMAT, after being the dog, is uh, actually done fairly well. The pattern doesn't look too bad. Uh, you got uh, a few days ago about 11 million shares into 11 million share high. You have very good support back here at about $43.56. Um, I don't know if you're going to get back there, uh, but that's at the point. This point is the only safe uh, place to buy it. Uh, what else? Uh, someone wants to look at the XLE. Is that what that is? Okay. Um, as we said, energy select, uh, probably fairly good. The downside that I have on the XLE as to pointing, going after the crude itself uh, was this big, big confluence level that we just hit today almost perfectly. Uh, that runs from... 61.24 to 60 dollars and 38 cents. We got to 60.25. Um, that's a good confluence level the way it's all set up. Um, it's probably going to need some consolidation at this point, more like the rest of the market. Energy off the lows, not that bad. Uh, actually, it's fairly decent. Uh, you did have a couple of gaps down. Uh, one that you actually filled. So you're up to that first gap that goes back to uh, the 5th of August that had 27.6 million shares. And again, you're into that today with about 12.7. So again, pretty good signs that you've gotten uh, a lot of the bounce in the XLE from that $55.55 low back on August 27th. Uh, but uh, not much else happening there. You can call me at 877-927-6648. I want to look at some other stuff, so let's go back to that very quickly. Oh, I had a question, follow-up questions, uh, so let's do that on uh, Gartley patterns. And the question is, um, when we were talking about whether or not a, a Gartley pattern is perfect or not, um, it just means that the the more ideal uh, that it is, uh, certainly looks to be like the more indicative it is of a move. 
Um, Blackstone, uh, I can't even say it, the Blackstone Group BX symbol on that one. Pretty nice looking Gartley out here. Uh, if you were looking to short this thing, I don't think there's any big money in it. Uh, but uh, certainly the pattern is what you're looking for. Uh, just no juice off that C point all the way up. And that probably tells you a great deal in that URL. Uh, you are, what is that? Uh, eh, hang on a second here. Let's get that. Um, Europe bull shares have made a little Gartley pattern out here today, and it's up at fairly high. Didn't have much of a pullback in the uh, B to C range on this one back to August 28th to start your C leg up to this D leg. You're at uh, 1.37 uh, or, you know, 137% uh, move of that X to A. And so that really sets you up here. And of course, you've really are starting to see how much you're actually banging into resistance on that U, excuse me, E-U-R-L, he said. So I got that one done. Uh, WEX, W-E-X, we'll look at a couple of these today. Um, this one's already turned, uh, a little bit more symmetrical in this one, and it's just a bearish Gartley and turned on this one. But you don't have the juice coming back in here, so you're right on that. I just don't think that this one's going to, well, at least you don't have a lot. Certainly no volume off the top so far today, but uh, you want to see you got two gaps down below. Uh, what else do we have that we wanted to look at? Do we, uh, we looked at the SMHs, didn't we? Take a look. Oh, got to turn all that stuff off, don't I? Okay. Um, hey, just got a little flag out here without much volume today on the SMHs, 2.4 million shares. Going back two days, you had 7.2 million shares. So yeah, it is a light, light volume day. And you're going back into these candles that truly had a sign of, of weakness on the way back down at about 5.4 million shares. So um, 7 million shares into that. Uh, on Thursday last week, on Friday, just 2.8 million shares today, just 2.5. So, like I said, pretty much exhaustion moves around the block. You want to keep a close eye on those as we keep a close eye on the indexes. We're off, uh, if this is right, still off uh, five and uh, yeah, five and a half points on the S&P cash. Dow's up 13, NASDAQ's down 45 on the back of uh, a few of those. Uh, Russell's 2000s there. When we come back, we'll look at Boeing. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com. 
educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And today, Boeing, or I'm not going, um, certainly sees some level of support around $360. They pushed on it hard on um, news that the 777 wide body, the new version of that, was testing. Apparently, a door lock broke, and that was enough to get everybody to jump up and down and scream, say Boeing was going nowhere. Uh, but lower. And of course, uh, not much actually going on in it if you looked at the chart. Um, had a lot of people after my discussion about Boeing last week uh, bringing up whether or not I would buy it. And I think I would. What I'm looking for is a very good options position. Um, I don't want to buy a $350 stock or $360 stock to make 50 bucks on it uh, and possibly lose money. Uh, but um, I think it could go back. There's so many people short this thing. I think it could go to 425 pretty easily if they just got an announcement that they're back on the air and in, in the air. Uh, so I'll keep a close eye on it. But like I said, I think the time to buy options probably even then is probably going to be November. And uh, it's just going to bore a lot of people out and get them complacent between now and then and the chance for them to get back in the air. Uh, to, 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 to what else do we have? Got a question on one of the stocks that I liked uh, as an IPO, down 8% today. Again, I don't like stocks that have lots of gaps in them, especially when they get three gaps. Um, you actually had two up gaps and two down. Well, you actually had three up gaps in this, and it did get up gap on that high on August 8th, and it's come all the way back down, rotated back lower. This means that you may have an opportunity to get uh, Avalara uh, back into this uh, mid-60s range. I didn't look at the news. Let's see if we can't uh, get a chance to take a look at the headlines on this earlier. Now, what these guys do is kind of a cloud service for figuring out what taxes all right, here. Okay. Uh, 1.7 million share block uh, shares are coming up for sale via Morgan Stanley. So a little bit of liquidation out here. Um, and that's it. That's uh, it was on the 21st of August. Let's see if they have anything else out here. I don't see anything, but I'll check it out later. Uh, anyway, I like this one back at the IPO. It looks like this time it's ready to come back and. Um, yeah, I'd be all over it if it comes back on light volume back at about 62.50 would be the target on that one. Uh, let's take a look at some of these others. As I get rid of some of this other stuff, check my mail. Okay, I got a couple of new ones there that we'll take care of. Um, question on the TZA. Um, you know, bonds, everything kind of moving together. In fact, we had a nice move in the if I can actually type TZA, TZA, he said. Okay, there we go. Um, I mean, it 
percentage wise, it's okay. You're back at support. There is a double gap right here at 47 bucks. Um, so we got for volume. Volume is actually fairly decent today. 6.6 .6 million shares to actually open that gap back on the 2nd of August. Uh, today, you're down on 3.6 million shares. So it looks like you're going to test it with lighter volume. That looks like that will hold right now for the bear shares, but we'll keep an eye on it. Uh, let's see else is my list of stuff. Got a question about Tesla. Can I short it? And, you know, if you were going to short it, um, I, I was saying short it at 260 if you want to get on it. My guess is this is going to do kind of a sideways action, maybe even till the end of the year. And the time to short Tesla again is going to probably be the beginning of the year. Um, unfortunately, you, it may have already rolled over by then. Um, you're probably going to have to be short this thing through earnings. And to me, that's too much of a gamble not prudent speculation. Uh, but I think their deliveries are going to be poor in the next earnings cycle. No matter what they said, uh, it's going to be problematic. Now, will the promise of being able to manufacture cars in China and deliver them over there be enough? And I don't know. Uh, a lot of other manufacturers coming out with electric automobiles already. And uh, what they gain in profits over in China, uh, will they lose over in the rest of the world? Uh, because they've been a fairly available for a long time. And uh, they've only sold a handful of cars in China, of which a handful of them have burned up. So you never know. Um, what else do we want to look at out here? Got a question to look at DDD uh, and see if there's anything out here. Uh, blew up on earnings. It's come back. It's filled at half, and it's done it with very light volume. You got uh, eh, 700,000 shares compared to this gap down with 6 million shares back on uh, the 8th of August. So don't see a lot going on in that one uh, to say that you need to be all over it. Uh, I would like for this thing to consolidate out. Uh, the sector is probably going to do fairly good. I just don't know if uh, there's enough money left at 3D systems to let them reap the rewards of uh, the earlier promises that were unfulfilled in the 3D printing market. Uh, okay, got a question about IYT. Are we in just in a bigger trading range? Uh, we're up uh, about 2% on the day. Eh, I think so. Again, I think we kind of go sideways here for a little while. Today, we don't have a lot of juice, 152,000 shares. And that's going back into a day that came down on 400,000 shares on the 1st of August. So you're going to have a lot of overhead resistance in this. Um, I'm not bearish other than the fact that I don't like to hold stocks while everything goes sideways. Maybe I'm wrong. And uh, I only want to hold stocks if I'm trading them, if I think the market's ready to go higher. My guess is that the market's not going to be ready to go higher probably until late Wednesday or Thursday this week when I'll look at it. So we may have a couple more days. CBLK, carbon black. Um, this thing, yeah, what else can you say? I think it's being bought out is what you could say. Uh, and work, W-O-R-K. Uh, we talked a great deal about this one. That's down another 10% today. I don't know what else you can say. I like the product, uh, but you should always separate the product and what you like from the stock. Uh, it can be overpriced, even though it's a good company. And the problem with Slack is, like a lot of these companies, even Facebook, even Amazon, at one time came down 90%. And the reason why is that they weren't ready to make money. Uh, the whole problem with uh, monetizing a system uh, or a product, even if it's a great system, continues on. Right now, most of the people that use Slack use it for free. And uh, there isn't an easy way to monetize it. Down 10% today. I haven't seen a bigger loser out here. So we'll give it the loser raspberry of the day.
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. NASDAQ uh, probably going to be a winner tomorrow with Apple coming out with its dog and pony and new phones. Uh, they're pretty good at uh, at beating the PR drum uh, to the point where they uh, knock a hole in it. So I expect uh, a great deal of, uh, uh, what would you call it? Um, uh, just the standard stuff you get from CNBC and the other people of that lather over uh, iPhones and Apple, although it's become a, a whole lot less than it has now in the last couple of years since it didn't go higher and higher every day. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think it could hit 220, 53 at least tomorrow sometime. That'll probably give the NASDAQ, which is weak today, a little bit of a boost. Uh, question is whether or not it holds it, and that's what you want to look at. But uh, probably a little more weakness in the S&P. Uh, just for tomorrow, maybe a little strength in Apple. Uh, I believe the thing starts at about 1 p.m. Uh, so if you're interday trading, just know that you might find some uh, nice volatility in, in the early afternoon as things get going on. Uh, to, to got anything else I'm looking at here? before the end of the day. Eh, not a whole lot. Uh, crude, at least U.S. crude, probably going up to 60 bucks. Uh, gold looks like it could pull back to 1480. Uh, when we have a volume, it's fairly good, just under five 
billion shares as we end the show, which is not blowout, but fairly good. Dollar index seems to be trapped between 98 and 99 bucks, and uh, certainly looks like the government and the Treasury are doing a good job of holding it there. Uh, when we get into earnings, uh, there just really isn't anything uh, out this week, I think, until Thursday. Uh, uh, hang on a second here. I think it's Thursday. Eh, is it not Thursday? I'll get to it tomorrow. Anyway, I don't think that there's anything to even speak of on earnings till Thursday. So quiet week, probably a little bit of sideways action, uh, but getting ready for the soup next week, Fed and some other stuff. So when you can, not when you have to. We'll see you here tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time.